You're listening to The Real Well Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. Do you know if you're profitable or if your real estate is actually cash flowing the way you want it to? Do you know how much money is coming in and going out? As simple as this sounds, it's often ignored or overlooked. I'm Kathy Fetke, and welcome to The Real Well Show, and Happy New Year. And by the way, I want to let you know that this show is also on YouTube. In case you want to watch the video version, just search Real Wealth, and you can subscribe to our channel there. All right, so today's guest has experience in wholesale, turnkey, burr, owner finance, rentals, lease options, and all the strategies you could think of. But in the process of growing, David Richter realized that as much money was coming in as was going out the door. That's when he created the Profit First cash flow system to help himself and other investors understand where their money is going and if there's enough left over to create that profit. He's also the author of Profit First for Real Estate Investing and founder of Simple CFO Solutions. And he's here with us today on The Real Well Show. So welcome, David. Kathy, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. This is going to be a fun interview. Let's start with your business. Uh, a fractional, it's a fractional CFO company, but you don't have any financial background. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Let's just dive right into it. So dive right in. <laughs> I was in the real estate world for a long time. The whole reason I even started this company was back in 2012. I started in real estate and I loved it. Loved the real estate investing world. Started working with a company because I was young in my early 20s. Then from there, we scaled that business. We were, they were doing about five deals a month on the residential side. Then from there, they scaled it up to about 25 deals a month while I was there. So we got to, I got to a lot of experience, but we were going to these mastermind events. And also in my last year working there, I was in the finance seat. So not with a financial background, but I did. I learned a ton. I was asking our CPA a bunch of questions. I learned how to read the profit and loss, the balance sheet, you know, cash flow statement during that year. And being in the finance position, it was, a, it was a quick learn. But then I was realizing, even though we were doing 25 deals a month, we were spending 26 worth a month out the door. So it's like, who cares if you make a million if you're spending 1.1? So that was my first clue that like, oh, shoot, like we're in trouble. Then I was going to those mastermind events and it was the same thing there. Like, yes, we're doing like a bunch of deals. We're doing, you know, millions of dollars a year. But then they're crying at the bar later, like, where's all my cash? You know, like, and just like, what the heck's going on? That way, that moment in time, I knew there was an epidemic. Like, okay, people know how to make money, but they have no idea what to do with it. So that took me on a journey. It took me on a journey there because I like I moved across the country from that company because I had enough rentals and stuff, sold a lot of things, moved across there during it was kind of during COVID time too. So that I moved into, you know, like near family and stuff like that in Maryland. And then from there started working with another investor. First thing I asked them, show me your books. And they were a mess. They were a mess, just like every other real estate investor under the sun that I've ever met. And I helped him turn that around. And that, to me, was the light bulb moment because he said, I now know just because of my numbers, what I'm making, spending, keeping, I can make these decisions to affect those numbers. And like it was the light bulb moment for me. Like I want to give other people this feeling, just the feeling of being in control, knowing where my money's going, how I can keep it. So that's how I started the business. But now got more than 40 people on the team as CFOs that have the CPA background or, you know, they have a financial background, a heavy one. And now we're out there trying to attack that and help people not just make the money, but learn the keep money skill as well, too. Oh my gosh, this is so important. And I wrote about it a little bit in my book, Retire Rich with Rentals is step number one is you got to know where you are. Yeah. You got to know how much money you make and how much money you spend. And what's the difference? The difference is cash flow, and it's either, either negative or positive, right? And most people don't know this basic step, right? It's really interesting hearing you say that because I don't have as much evidence that people don't know this. Just when I was a mortgage broker, that's when I yeah. saw people wanting million dollar loans and they were very wealthy doctors and, uh, you know, lawyers. And yet, you know, they, they didn't really, their finances were a mess. So I could see it just from that, but yeah, very interesting. Okay. So the first step, like you said, is really understanding where the cash flow is coming in and where it's going out. Um, and, and, and what's next? How do you, how do you build your real estate portfolio from there or your portfolio in general? So I think a lot of people, 
when they're thinking about real estate, they're becoming that like, okay, I'm going to just go find the deals and then it'll, it'll all work out. As long as I have money coming in, we'll be okay. What I really try to tell people is you want to be a business owner and business owners know certain things. They know what we were just talking about, like how much is coming in, how much is going out and the difference between that. The first thing we do with people is like, what is, do you know what you're making, spending and keeping every single month? Like that's the first that you got to know where you stand. The second thing we help people to make sure they know and they're building their portfolio the right way and they're actually building something that's going to help them, not hurt them, is we implement a cash flow system to know, to make sure they know as the entrepreneur because <laughs> I know you said you don't have a lot of evidence. I have lots of evidence of where people just don't know where they stand. But I think it's too, there's this knowledge gap in the marketplace. They think that most business owners think that because they don't have the CPA background, because they're not a bookkeeper, or they don't know the financial end. It's this big, scary monster that only the financial people know. So it's like this guarded secret. And they're like, there's no way I want to touch that with a 10 foot pole. I just want to go buy properties and I want the cash flow. And what you really need to know as a business owner is that gap is much shorter. And that's where I took the profit first concept from the book profit first and said, this is a great tool, a cash flow management tool to help the entrepreneur understand where every dollar is going in their business. It is just like the envelope principle, like of knowing and like in your personal finances, giving every dollar a name. Profit First helps you give every dollar a name in your business to make sure you know where every dollar is going. So that's usually how we introduce it next to make sure that no matter what, even if you don't know how to read a P&L and a balance sheet, you don't know what's going on. If I can just get you to know what your cash is doing, because you're going to manage your cash no matter what. Money is going to come into your bank account and money will go out. And that is a form of cash management, just having one big bank account and the money goes in and out and you have no idea what's going on. That is one form to manage it. What I want to do is leverage what they're already doing. They're looking at their bank account. They're seeing if there's money in it, if there's not. And I want to leverage to say, okay, let's name all those dollars. Let's open up some bank accounts and name them like your pay. Like you should be paying yourself something even when you're first starting. If you're if your first rental, it might not be what you need from that first rental, but can you do 10 bucks a month or something? Like getting in the habit of successful business owners. So that's what we try and instill next is, can we give you a cash management system that helps you instill good habits with your money? Because I don't want you to just be successful on this rental. I want your whole portfolio to be profitable and you're able to feel like this was worth it. This was worth it along the way. And be, when we have 100 rentals or 200 rentals or like 1,000 rentals, like now we have so much cash flow, we can do what we want with it. But then you're building the proper habits from the earlier deals. Then when you get double or triple or 10 extra deals, you're going to be that much more profitable. So that's what we implement next to make sure someone has a portfolio that actually helps them and not hurts them. I love it. Yeah. We have a part-time CFO as well. And they look at our numbers every month. I, I happen to be married to a very detail oriented person. So it was <laughs> um, Rich that first came, you know, when he came in and started helping me with, with real wealth. Um, one of the first things he said is, you know, we've got to track every penny, which yeah. now in retrospect is like so obvious yeah. that it was things like marketing. I, I would have a gut feel. I wanted to I wanted to, you yeah. know, have a radio show and, and, you know, the, the, co I didn't even know what the cost of that would be. All I knew is it would be successful and it was, uh, but he was like, well, we still need to know <laughs> like, right. wh what is it producing and how do you track it so that you can put more money into it or less money into whatever it is you're doing. When we hired the uh, part-time CFO, it came down to employees and how much benefit is that employee to the company? What is right. the, uh, you know, the investment in this person should be yielding more than the cost of them or the cost right. of whatever it is, right? And so tracking, 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 very important. And this is a great time of year. It's the same like dieting, right? If you, it, a lot of times we're not aware. I picked up a, a this chocolate thing that I love to eat and that I, when I drive by Air One, very expensive store, I always stop and get this chocolate thing, but I never looked at the calories. <laughs> and I did recently and I was like, oh my gosh, I'd have to hike for two hours to, to burn this off. It's the yeah. same thing. Calories in, calories out. You don't, yeah. you want less coming in than out. So, uh, or yeah. Uh, so with finances, all right. You, one of the things you say is how you can become instantly profitable as an investor, no matter the market. What do you mean by that? That's where 
you implement a system like Profit First, where it, it gives you a tangible framework to say, okay, when my dollars come in, what do I do with them? So that way, if you get, okay, let's say you have $1,000 coming in as your gross rent, and then you've got maybe $200 for cash flow, like the rest, the first 800 is eaten up by PITI, you know, all the stuff that gets eaten up first. Well, that $200 is what you really put into your bank account. So that $200, how is that divvied up? And what we say in Prof First is you should literally open up like different envelopes. I'm putting that in air quotes here, envelopes and different bank accounts and name them like profit and owner's comp and owner's tax and making sure those first three are for you, the owner, the benefit of the owner, making sure there's actual profitability. So that way you have like an extra bonus account for you. You've got the owner's pay. So that way you can pay yourself from every deal and owner's tax. If you're going to own, if you're going to, if you're going to have rentals, you might not own as much tax, but if you're going to do anything active, you want to be saving for taxes. So it's like, Opening up those so you can have all those first dollars going towards you, making sure you're building a profitable company because most people, like I was talking about, have one big bank account. I like to call it the black hole account. It go, Money goes in, money gets sucked right back out. What the heck just happened? I have no idea. It's all a mystery to me. And that's where if you just have a system and these – for a lack of a better word, those envelopes or those checkbooks or like those different bank accounts, name specific things, and especially for the profitability of the company from your very next deal, you can at least put a percentage away. And I tell people, what if, because I get a lot of like, well, what if we're not profitable now? Or like, what if we're already in the hole? Or what if we're spending more than we're making? Then that's where this next single time you get income in, can you put 1%? into like a profit account or like your owner's pay or anything like that. Like start super small because we have to back you up from where you've gotten into. If you've gotten yourself into a hole, we got to get you out, but with good habits. And if you're newer, that's where it gets fun. If you're newer, I can make you profitable from your very first deal and keep you profitable because then it's like you're slowly building the percentages and you're like, like you said, you're like the dieting and the working out. You're literally building the reps, the more properties you get and the more income comes in because you're building it off those percentages and the bank accounts. And the bigger you get, the more you can play around with those percentages and give yourself more or less or more into the business, but you still have percentages going towards being pro you being profitable. It's your protecting yourself. Even I'm, I'm very much a man of faith. And in Ecclesiastes, it says money is a defense. You want that money to be a defense for you. It's not, it is there for offense to go buy more properties, but it's also a defense there. So you don't go out of business or belly up. I've talked with so many business owners, real estate investors, especially that are starting to buy properties, but then they're, they're, Cash poor, but property rich, equity rich, right? And it's like, oh, shoot, where's all my cash? Like, I can't buy that next deal, and I can't put food on the table. So it's like, I'm trying to protect them from the personal level of like, I want to make sure you can eat, but I also want to make sure you can build a portfolio for a long time as well, too. So that's where it's like, if I can build these habits right now and give you profitability, that's going to help you be profitable right now, but it's going to help you build even greater profitability the more you build on those habits. Yeah, that's why uh, one of the things, again, that I say in my book uh, is make sure that you have enough reserves. A lot of our audience is buy and hold investors. Yeah. And I, I'm a big fan of leverage. I think you should leverage oh, as yeah. much as you can to acquire sure. as much as you can. But you need to have the reserves there, the cash to make sure yep. that if things slow down, you can keep the machine going. What's your recommendation for buy and hold real estate investors on what kind of reserves they should have available? Well, uh, that's a very broad question because there's a lot of, I, whenever I speak to people, I always ask them, number one, you have to know what, what is winning to you. Because you go to a lot of events or you listen to podcasts or you go on Facebook or you go to a mastermind, especially or like stuff like that. And where you hear people doing a lot of things and you feel like I need to do that or I need to have a certain number of doors. It's like, wait a second. You're building this for your family, for your, you know, for your peace of mind. Let's make sure we're not blowing things up. So it's like, that's the first thing I need to get where they're coming from. But honestly, if I just gave a general answer for reserves, I would say a minimum of three months of your expenses. Like, I want to give you a little bit of breathing room. Then we have clients that we work with that a lot of people focus on because we've got the different bank accounts set up. We actually put more reserves in like the owner's pay account, like five to six months. So that way, if the business blew up completely, 
the owner could land softly and be like, okay, where do I need to pivot? What do I need to do? And they're not feeling like, oh my gosh, not only is my company going under, but I'm going under and all the, the red lights are going off. That's where I try to give people different benchmarks. If you're new and you're just getting started, your reserves are probably going to be a lot less when you start. Like you got to start building that reserve because you're going to just have things break and like things come up and like things in, you know, capital expenditure, you know, like you're going to have all this stuff. So start to build that, but that's where it's a habit. Get to where you could have at least the recommended three to six months of OPEX. And then I like to have three to six months of just for you, the owner in a specific account. It's like these are the types of things to be thinking about of what reserves really mean. And then I love what you said because what you said, Kathy, about leverage. I would rather pay interest to a lender than use all the money in my bank account, go to zero just be because I found the greatest deal of all time. But I'm losing sleep for several months because I just I just ravished all of my cash and now it's all gone. And it's like, yeah. well, hold on, wait a second. Like we just need to think, we need to ask yourself just a couple better questions. What does this really mean if I use this cash? Does this upset my peace of mind more than like what I really want this deal? Or is there a better way I could get money from something else, pay a few extra percentages, and it still works for the deal? So it's those types of things. But there you go. There's my expository on what reserves should be. And like it really also depends on what are you wanting from the business too? Is this something that you're building alongside your W-2 or is this something you're jumping into full time? Because there's different answers for those as well. But there's my general answers. I love it. And it, I usually say six months reserves just for that extra yeah. peace of mind, because I have been in a position where we didn't have enough reserves and we lost properties because mm -hmm. We couldn't hold them. And those yep. properties would have done really well had we been able to hold. It's called yep. buy and hold for a reason. You've got to be able to right. hold it. Yep. And you can't hold it without cash because things will happen. People forget that this is a, a people business more than a real estate business, at least in the buy and hold. You, your tenant could lose their job. They could become ill. They could go through a divorce. There are things that happen uh, that could prevent them from being able to pay their rent. And uh, having, you know, so we have to just be prepared for that. And the same with business. Things happen like pandemics where you might get shut down for a while and you need that, you know, three, again, three to six months reserves. Um, we say six months just to, 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 for that peace of mind. And the older you get, the more you want that peace of mind when you're younger, yes. you know, perhaps you could sleep less. <laughs> there you go. A lot of people want that peace of mind for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We had some really amazing tax breaks. They're starting to diminish this year. Um, a lot of times I see investors and I had a lot of investors calling me at the very last minute, trying to get those last minute tax breaks and kind of investing in deals that were risky, but they wanted the tax break. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? The end of the year, um, you know, craze to get those tax deductions and maybe buy the truck you don't need just to get the deduction. Again, it's the situation. If they're doing it just because their CPA said you could save money here, but it's going to cost you a lot more in the money that they don't have. If you're buying stuff with money that you don't have for something that's going to depreciate, why then? Just because you'll save some money in taxes the next year is not a good enough excuse to put yourself under more of a financial burden. Now, if you're buying a property, that's different than a truck. Okay. So if you're buying a property and you use the leverage and it doesn't take you all the way under, it's like, okay, well then buy as much as you can before the end of the year. Like utilize every single thing that you can do, especially like you said, while the bigger tax breaks are there. It's smart to do that. But as long as we're trying to build that defense, like making sure that it doesn't either take us down or take away our peace of mind. So if it's like, I'm going to save a few bucks, but I'm going to live with no sleep for the next two months because I'm going to be so just like, I'm going to be right on that edge of not having enough money, then it's not worth it. But if you're like, hey, I'm, I have good counsel. I have good people in my life. This is what it looks like if I do these deals. This is what it looks like if I pay these lenders or whatever it might be. This is what I look like, it looks like if I buy that truck with the business and go through there and what the cash is left over and it's all green lights. Well, then great. It just shouldn't be that spur of the moment. My CPA emailed me, but they don't really know my situation or don't know me personally and just said, hey, maybe you should think about buying a truck. It's like, wait a second. No, 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 no. It's like, we need to dive a little bit deeper than that. But if you're getting good counsel, then it's like, okay, if it really does help you and you're not running out of cash, move forward. Yeah, I love it. We almost bought a truck and then we're like, what are we doing? <laughs> we don't need this tax <laughs> yeah. break that bad. <laughs> right, be stuck with there. Because then you've got insurance and then you got yeah, to park it somewhere. All the, things. <laughs> all all the, the things. things. It's like, do you need the hassle more than what it's really worth of the tax break? So, yeah.
Yeah. Invest in a syndication instead or real estate or the short term rentals or yeah, all good. Anything. (laughs) All right. All right, Dave. Well, this has been really fun. Thank you so much for joining me on The Real Wealth Show. Any last thoughts for our listeners? Okay. If you're listening to this and you are, whether you've bought your first property or you're a thousand properties deep, I have been there on the first property side and the thousand property side, and you can be profitable. You can build a property portfolio that will really serve you. There just has to be good habits that you put in place. That's where I went down the profit first path. That can give you a good framework. Kathy, just listen to her on every single episode and read her book. It's like there's good people around you that can help you with the keep money skill. If you're good at making the money, you need to surround yourself with education and people that have the keep money skill so you don't run out of money on your way up. You don't want to do that. So that's where I want to leave you with. If you can just do one thing from here, I would say pick up a book, whether it's Kathy's, whether it's a profit first book or whatever it might be that can help you instill some of those habits in your personal life and in your business. Love it. All right. Once again, thank you for being here on The Real Well Show. And people can find out about you. You already said it, profit first. Thanks for having me, Kathy. And thank you for joining me here on The Real Well Show. If you want to find out more about tax tips or how to structure your portfolio, you can go to realwealthshow.com. When you join, it's free. You'll get access to over 500 free webinars to help you on your journey so that you can have a profitable real estate portfolio. Again, I'm Kathy Fedke. Thanks for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.